So you've clicked on this video to learn about how to process emotions, but what does processing emotions actually even mean? Well, that's exactly what I want to show you in this video. I'm going to explain to you step by step what I do when I'm feeling something uncomfortable coming up in my body and how I work through it. And that's going to give you a better idea of what it means to process emotions. So let's get started. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Carol and I'm a life coach from Carol Cares who helps all teens and young adults work through their mental health challenges. I want to welcome you if you're new to my channel and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. If you are thinking about self-harming right now, please hit the video link above at any time during this video. So what does processing your emotions or your feelings even mean? When I think of the word process, it makes me think of some chemical change or procedure that something has to go through to change it somehow. So how do you take your depression or your anger or your anxiety that you're feeling and change it somehow? What process do your feelings or your emotions need to go through in order to change them? That sounds heavy. And that's why I think humans in general don't want to feel their emotions. So you're definitely not alone if you're avoiding feeling. I get that. I didn't want to feel my emotions for a long time. I mean, allowing yourself to feel can bring up some really painful shit and you'd rather not do that. And you might just decide to click off this video right now because your mind's telling you that it's too dangerous to feel. So try to stick with me as long as you can. Let me show you four steps that I use to process emotions when they're coming up in my body. Well, the first thing I have to do is to become aware of the feeling that something is stirring in my body. This is where you get uncomfortable and you notice that something is coming up. Maybe it's your anxiety again or, or fear or you're starting to get angry or maybe you're crying again. So a lot of times someone or something will trigger you and you just start to feel something. This is when I want you to become aware that something is going on in your body. So just the very act of being able to say, oh, there's something coming up again and, and I want you to become aware of it. And just being able to kind of step back from it for a second and notice that there's something coming up, that's huge. Awareness is the key here because what you decide to do with this feeling is crucial. And this brings me to my next step. I want you to allow the feeling to exist. Oh, and this is hard to do, but I want you to try to do it even if it's just for five seconds. And I mean that because you will want to shut this feeling down right away. You will do everything in your power to block it or numb it. And you will do it automatically. For me, I immediately go for my junk food because I don't want to feel what's coming up. And my eating isn't the only way I numb out. I'll eat or I'll binge on the most pointless YouTube videos or I'll just scroll through my phone like I'm in this trance. And you know your own ways to numb out or distract yourself. Everyone does it. So this whole period of numbing out or blocking our emotions from coming out is actually what causes us all this pain, believe it or not. I spend so much time and energy on just trying to avoid my emotion. And I know that it gets me nowhere except temporary relief from what I need to face. But I still do it every single time because I hate feeling my emotions. And when I finally work my way to the actual emotion that's trying to come out, I always end up saying to myself, that wasn't that bad. So I've learned over and over that blocking or numbing my feelings just puts things off temporarily because I know these same feelings will just keep coming back over and over until I face them. So I want you to become aware of how you avoid your feelings. What do you do or what do you use to cope? If you're using drugs, alcohol, sex, TV binging, gaming, gambling, pornography, maybe excessive reading, excessive working and over exercising and the list can go on and on and you're doing it to avoid your emotional pain in other words you don't want to feel it's the hardest thing in the world to do now i'm going to be honest with you here it's usually after a food binge or after hours of numbing out on my phone that i'll finally say to myself all right carol now that you've done that enough it's time to get down to feeling what you need to feel so don't beat yourself up if you slip if you catch yourself self-harming or if you used again when you've been trying so hard to stop or if you've been sitting on the couch for days and you just don't feel motivated to get up or if your anxiety is really bad I want you to remember this have compassion for what you are working through right now this is hard work and it's a process and that's why I'm asking you 
to just become aware of what you use or what you do to numb out. If you need help identifying whether or not you have an addiction, I've put out two videos. One is how do you know you're addicted to something? And the other one is how do you stop your addiction in three steps? I'll link them at the end and in the description box. And now for the final step, but the most important one, you need to journal from the message that you hear. What message do you hear when this feeling is starting to come up in your body? There's a message if you allow the feeling to exist, like I said, just for five seconds. But if you immediately try to avoid the feeling and you look for some other way to numb it out, you're not gonna hear it. So listen carefully to what the feeling is telling you. It has a message. I want you to take that exact message you hear and write it out on paper immediately or on the computer. Let me give you an example. So if my anxiety is in full force and I hear the message, I'm scared, or don't go there, it's too dangerous, then I will use those exact words to start my journal. Or if I'm feeling some self-hate that's led to self-harming, like overeating for me, I might hear the message like, I hate myself, or I'm so ugly, or I'm so fat, I'm disgusting. These are actual messages that I've heard, and I've used them as writing prompts or first sentences in my journaling. And I just continue to write from what I'm feeling at the time. And sometimes my writing has been very painful, especially when I was attacking myself. But if that's the message you're hearing, and that's how you're feeling, then you have to honor that as painful as it feels. Try not to judge the message that you hear. Just write it out. When you start to judge the message that you're hearing, this is when you're gonna wanna numb out because you don't like the message that you're hearing. And a lot of you have this very painful shit that you need to get out. Check out my main video, how to journal for mental health. Or I've put out a series of videos on specific emotions like journaling from your depression, your shame, your anger, your fear, or your loneliness and I'll have links in the description below. Now I've shared with you four steps that I use to process my emotions. Now what I'd like you to do now is to click one of these videos that I've linked on the screen right now to help you get started. Until next time, remember to have compassion for yourself for what you're working through and stay safe. Bye for now.